we go. Geometry, chapter 11 and 12. Uh, we are reviewing. Okay. Mm, here are the formulas you will be provided with on the test. Go ahead, take the time to familiarize yourself with them. And here are the first three questions. Super easy peasy. Um, number one, that is D. Different heights of the surface are represented by dark segments. Number two, I won't insult your intelligence by telling you that answer. Number three, a horizontal cross-section. That means if you cut it this way, you are going to see a circle. All right, number four, the lateral area of a cube. Keyword here, cube. Lateral area, a cube is a type of rectangular prism where the lateral area is perimeter times the height. But in a cube, the perimeter is just four times the side. And the height is also the side, so that's 4 times the side squared. Divide by 4, you get 9 is the side squared. Square root that, and you get 3. All right. We want to find the surface area of the outside of an open box. Make sure you're reading these questions closely. The box is open. That means there's no top to it. So there's only one base plus the lateral area. So that's 20 times 12 plus the lateral area perimeter times the height, 64 times 8, 752. Numbers 6 and 7, we are finding the lateral and surface area of a right cylinder with a radius of 3 and a height of 17. Here's our formula. This first part is the lateral area. So the lateral area in green here, 2 pi times 3 times 17, which is 320.4. And then add in the two bases. 2 pi r squared is 56, approximately 56.55. Add those together, we get about 377. All right, 8 and 9 to find the lateral area here. That's just finding the six triangles. So we do a half times 4 times 12, where 12 is the slant height here and then times 6, because there are 6 of those. Or you could have found the perimeter, times a half, times 12. One way or another, you get 144. For the surface area, we have to find the area of the regular polygon down here. And since this is a hexagon, we take 360 divided by 6 to get the central angle. That would be 60 degrees. Divide that by 2 to find this angle. That's a 30 degrees which makes this a 30, 60, 90. And then, so in a 30, 60, 90, if this is 2, then this side over here is 2 radical 3. Okay, Oop, there we go. So that side is 2 radical 3. So I take half times the apothem, which is 2 radical 3, times the perimeter, which is 4 times 6, and that gets me 24 radical 3. So I'm going to have 144 plus 24 radical 3. Okay, here we're looking at the cone. The surface area of a cone is its lateral area, pi r times the slant height, plus the base, pi r squared. So slant height is 12 times the radius 2 and times pi 75.4 times the base gives us approximately 88. Right there, and right here. All right, surface area of a cube. Again, keyword cube, that means every side, the base, the height, all sides are the same. So we do perimeter times the height. Well, the perimeter is just four times the side. The height is the same as the side length. The base is the side length times the side length, or side squared. So that gives us 4s times s is 4s squared, plus the 2s squared, gives us 6s squared, divide by 6, and we get 16 equals s squared, square root that, and we get 4s. The volume is length times width times height, where length, width, and height are all the same, so it's side times side times side, or side cubed, which gives us 64. All right, we know the cylinder has a height of 5 and a volume of 320. Formula for the volume Volume is pi r squared height, so volume 320 pi is pi r squared times 5. Divide by 5 and pi, pi cancels out. Divide by 5, you get 64. 
is r squared, square root that, and you get 8. Square pyramid has a height that is 8, and a base with sides that are each 9. Okay, so the base, and it's square pyramid, so the base is going to be 9 squared for the base, times the height, times the third, or divided by 3, gives us 216. Volume here. Now here we have 60 degrees, which makes this 30. 30, 60, 90, which means this side, since the longer leg is the shorter leg times the square root of 3, the shorter leg is the longer leg divided by the square root of 3. So that's 24 divided by the square root of 3. Put that into our formula, and we get 1 third pi. Then the radius is 24 over radical 3 squared times 24. And that gets us b. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, and that's easy peasy. The sphere has a volume of 972 pi cubic inches, and here we have the volume of a sphere. We know this is the volume, so plug that in for volume. We can cancel out the pi by dividing by it. Multiply by the reciprocal, you get 972 times 3 over 4 is r cubed. Now you have to do the cube root of 972. If you haven't already evaluated this, you can do that under the cube root and type it in your calculator, and that comes out to be 9. All right, the Great Pyramid originally had a height of 148 meters, and the base was a square with a size of 230. If you can't picture it, draw yourself a little picture. So the sides of the base were 230, the height was 148, and then plug away the base, since it's a square, is 230 times 230, or 230 squared. That gets us G. Okay, two square pyramids are similar. The sides of the bases are 4 inches and 12 inches. So one of them has 4, the other has 12. The smaller pyramid has a height of 6 inches. So we want to find this one, set up a proportion. So that's 6 over 4 is equal to 12 over x. And then either you can see the factor here is 4 times 3, so you do 6 times 3 and get 18, or you just solve by cross-multiplying. All right, the ratio here is 3 to 5. So the smaller one is 3, the larger one is 5. The volume of the smaller cylinder is 54. So smaller one on top, larger one on bottom. 3 to 5, 54 to x. Set up your proportion, cross multiply to solve, and you get 250. All right, here we have a couple of uh, shapes where you have to have 6, 30, 60, 90 triangle here. So if this is 10, this side is half of 10, which makes that 5. So that makes the height 5 radical 3. So then we do base, 20 times the height, 20 times 5 radical 3, which gives us 100 radical 3, which is 173.2, 173.2, and then over here, we know that this right here is a 45, 45, 90. So it's the hypotenuse divided by radical 2. So 7.8 over radical 2 times 5.5, base times height, and that gives us approximately 30.3. Here we have, we know the area, we know the base, we want to find the height, so we just have to divide the area by the base. And area divided by base, 2250 divided by 50 is 45. 45, there we go. All right, here again, 30, 60, 90. So here we have the right angle. So that's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is double the shorter side. So that makes this shorter side 3. And therefore, we have the average of the two bases. Add them together, divide by 2, 
times 3, we get 46.5. And then for a kite, we multiply the di diagonals. Diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2, and that's 7.5. And that was your easy peasy test. Oh, there was a bonus question. The answer to the bonus question is 391.57. 391.57. There you go. Steady, steady, steady.